What up, YouTube? I am your host, Mediocre to Toe Reviews and Reviews. Back in here with one more video. Guys, um, have a uh, interesting video to react to today. This was sent to me by Patreon supporter Shao Khan Show the Charge. I see you, my G. I appreciate the request. Enemies of Man, Part 1 Dominance. Now, this comes from the content creator Turd Flinging Monkey. Interesting, <laughs> interesting name. Okay. Uh, he used to create content on YouTube. Now he's at another site. I'm sure that you can Google him and find more of this content and some that you're interested in. Also, as well, I have not seen this video, so I'm going to give you guys an in a moment reaction. Uh, and also, two, he's playing a video game or something like that. I don't even know what the video game is, but you'll see. Okay. But if you don't want to see it, just treat it like a podcast. Okay. Just <laughs> don't even look at it and then just listen. All right. Without further ado. Hey, everyone. I'm going to be starting a new mini series called The Enemies of Man. And I want to talk about male nature. Now we spend a lot of time talking about female nature, but it's important to talk about male nature as well. As it's written in The Art of War, if you know yourself and know your enemy, you'll win 100 battles. Now let me clarify what I'm going to be talking about and what I'm not going to be talking about. I want to talk about male nature. Things that are instinctual or intrinsic to being a man. Things that we don't really have any control over that we can't fully purge ourselves of. We can only be aware and take necessary steps to compensate for these instincts. I'm not going to be talking about things like chivalry. Men have to be trained from childhood to defer to women, to let women get away with bullshit, to not hit women back. You know, these are things that have to be beaten into boys' heads. These are not instincts. If a female lion attacks a male lion, you know, just some random female lion, that female lion is going to get her throat ripped out. There is no chivalry in the animal kingdom. These are just real quick. Um, that's a, a fantastic point. Um, that chivalry has to be trained. Yeah, this is that is definitely something that was kind of beat into your head as a young boy. I mean, I remember being, you know, seven, eight, nine years old and having quarrels uh, with little girls who were also my age, and the girls were bigger than me. <laughs> They, they were bigger than me. I remember that. And and oftentimes way stronger than me. I was I was a super late bloomer. It probably has a lot to do with why I look so young. I was a super late bloomer. Okay. So I was I was a puny kid. I was scrawny. I mean, to the point where people used to walk up to my pops like in the mall, like, are you are you feeding him? Like I was like that type of small. Anyway, um, but then the idea of, you know, uh women can or little girls can hit you, but you can't hit them back. I always like, well, think about that for a second, but, but, but why? They're, they're bigger than me. You see what I'm saying? But I mean, as you get older, you get to see the physical difference and the separation, like as you get older. But during a time, uh, you know, little girls develop uh, physically quicker than, than boys. So yeah, that's definitely something that is trained and beat into your head. Uh, let, let, let's move on. I was also, real quick too, I appreciated his first point from the book, The Art of War. Uh, if you know yourself, uh, and you know your enemy, you can win the battle a hundred times over again. I mean, when I thought of the know yourself, um, the knowing of yourself is the hardest component in that equation. Although it doesn't seem like it would be, right? It seems like, you know, being able to study what someone else is doing whenever they choose to show you what exactly they're doing. But honestly, I think like sometimes that sense of introspection is one of the hardest things that, that we have to do. Understanding and being truthful what your weaknesses are. Being truthful with what your actual strengths are. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, and if you put yourself on an action plan to nip those things in the bud, I think a lot of positive things can occur. Uh, anyway, uh, let's let's move on. Let's see what else he has to say. These are not instincts. These are simply cultural norms that have to be beat into boys' heads in order to enforce gynocentrism. The other thing I'm not going to be talking about is male disposability, because this is simply part of nature. Nature designed men and women differently to serve different roles. Men are effectively designed to be disposable. This is why a single man can impregnate many women. It's expected that a lot of men are going to die because men are inherently disposable and yet the species can live on through male disposability. The weak die, the strong reproduce, and humanity endures. And unless we change the dynamics of sexual reproduction, this is the way it's going to stay. What I want to talk about are the instincts that guide male behavior and lead to the current situation we find ourselves in. 
a lot of people mistakenly believe that gynocentric society is somehow indicative of women being these master manipulators or these cunning behind the scenes people that just are so smart and cunning. No, they're not. You give women way too much credit. You look at the end result and you just assume that women planned all this. Women didn't plan this. Women are benefiting from it, but they didn't plan it. They don't, they're not capable it. of planning it. I Our agree. gynocentric society is the result of men oppressing other men yeah. in order to pander to women yeah. for themselves. To get viscosity. We are <laughs> our own worst enemy. Facts. So, you know, even if you completely understand female nature, and I've talked about this myself, gynocentrism is enforced. Now, who enforces gynocentrism? Not the women. They have no capability to enforce their own will. Let me just comment on that real quick, because maybe I'm not I'm not being as clear. Um, so when he's saying that this force component, I think that, um, you know, you have like the white knights of society that, you know, do things in order to get brownie points from women. Now, it's not to say and take away from that there were inequalities at a point in our history. There absolutely, they're, they're absolutely without a doubt was. When I think of the white knights, it's the ones that forego the positives of being a man for the brownie points of being closer or accepted um, by women. So when I said that statement previously, it was speaking towards those, not the things that men have done to put in the place, such as like the women's suffrage movement, which was started by men in order for a degree of uh, equality in our society. So I, I wanted to clear that up real quick. Men enforce gynocentrism. They enforce it against other men. Mm -hmm. We men are our own jailers. Now, why? Why would men design a gynocentric society which harms men? Why would men do this? It doesn't make any sense. Well, I'm going to answer that question by pointing to three things which are intrinsic to male nature. And the reason why I think this is a very important distinction is even if you take the red pill, even if you understand female nature, male nature, these things are always going to be a part of you, of your instincts. All you can do is be aware of them and try to redirect them somehow so they aren't damaging your life. Just, just real quick as well. Um, so he said something interesting um, in it that he's saying it's only men that have control of men. And I think today that is actually not true, right? I think that there's other vehicles put in place now that seeks accountability. Um, and I think from an evolutionary perspective, I understand what he's saying because men are bigger than and women. So really you can impose a will just through pure brute strength. But as we see in 2020 today, cancel culture is a thing. And that is a power that has been derived specific to the technology that we have today. So I think that although I understand what he's saying from an evolutionary perspective, I think if you look at today, um, there are groups, activist groups that will, you know, go out their way <laughs> out of their daily duties in order to make you lose your job based off of your view or, uh, or, or a view that they don't jive with, that they don't agree with, right? So it's like the evenness, the distribution of, of, of power and how your action can reflect in your future is becoming um, a little bit more equal from a gender perspective. But I get his point. Let's move on. Hopefully in some productive way, but at least in a neutral way. Because the way nature designed these instincts was to facilitate male disposability for the good of the species, of course. The first one, and these aren't in any particular order, they aren't like ranked from least important to most important. These are all important. These are the three aspects of male nature which serve to hamstring our development and advancement and have led directly to a gynocentric society. The first one is the dominance instinct. Now the dominance instinct is like the equivalent of hypergamy in men. Whereas hypergamy drives women to seek out resources in men, dominance drives men to compete with other men for resources in order to achieve reproductive success themselves. Mm. So women have hypergamy, they seek out resources, men have dominance, they acquire resources nice. at the expense of other men. Because unlike women, men view other men as competition. And this is why we can't ever come together to address male issues. When a man sees another mm. man suffering, he doesn't think that's my brother, I need to help him, unless he literally is his brother. But just some random man, men just don't have empathy for random men. 
they don't project themselves into that man's shoes and think that could be me. Because men view other men as competition, because of the dominance instinct, we intrinsically take delight in the suffering of other men. We see men suffering, we're like, cool, that's one less person I have to compete with. Mm. Oh, he, oh, Bob got fired? Cool, maybe I can get his job. No cool. thought is given to Bob and what he's going through. No one gives a shit. Men don't give a shit, and women don't give a shit either, because as far as women are concerned, due to their hypergamy, he's now undesirable. They don't give a shit about Bob either. No one gives a shit about Bob. This is why the suicide rate is so high among males. So we have a situation mm. where, unlike women, men do not have an own group bias. It's good in a way because men can look at situations objectively. This is where the justice-based morality comes from, as opposed to the care-based morality of women. Where women look at how it affects them or women or whatever. They affect group dynamics as opposed to objectively looking at the facts and making a just decision. Now the bad thing is, when men are being disadvantaged by a situation, men don't really care as long as the men aren't them. It's the classic, it won't happen to me. And you see this all the time. You warn men about, you know, whatever. It doesn't even have to be female related. It could be anything. And then when the bad things happen, like, oh, I should have listened to him. But, you know, now it's too late. So what can we do about the dominance instinct? How can we let me but before he gets into what we can do, let me uh, give you guys my quick thoughts. I, I think he is dead on. I think he is spot on. Um, I haven't ever heard it described in a way that he just described it. Um, I think that men do have a dominance instinct. We have a competitor's instinct. We have an aggressive um, instinct. And I, and I think we do do that against other men. I mean, look at our, our team sports and the way that, that, that they were created and the way that, that we play them. Um, now, I've said this on the channel a multitude of times before because I get folks that come up and, you know, um, want to kind of blame everything on women. And I said, you know, at the end of the day in the dating game, you know, I think, you know, your feelings can get so wrapped up in it because as a heterosexual male, you are only dating women, right? <laughs> so, so, so your experiences are only with women. But if you take a step back and look at this human nature thing and you look at the male's perspective, male nature from my eyes is a hundred times more dangerous than female nature. Why? Because male nature will kill you. Male nature will kill you. It will murk you. And that's a fact. Male jealousy is one of the most destructive forces that man can have on man. And that has been true within my life. I'm sure all of y'all have stories or rethinking thinking about things in your life where dudes will do incredibly terrible things to you in order to feel achievement over you or to feel power over you. You know, I think specific to the black community, the black culture, um, this is the uh, crab in a barrel uh, mindset and mentality. And it's so pervasive and it's so prevailing within our culture is that it keeps the hood the hood. Um, and so much that, that if you have some type of um, progression in your life beyond the hood, then they just try to, and they demean you and they try to put you down for your accomplishments or things that you have achieved and then talk to you like you a dog because you don't come back in the hood with all of the knowledge and the expertise that you've learned on your path in life or will try to sucker you in to come back and then the jealousy and the male nature can enact on top of that. R.I.P. Nipsey Hussle. R.I.P. Pop Smoke. Curb this. How can we redirect the dominance instinct? Well, the first thing you have to do is recognize that everyone has a dominance instinct. It leads to almost everything that defines masculinity. The best way you can kind of deal with it is to redirect it into some productive fashion. Sports, something like that. Something that doesn't harm men because you're always going to want to be dominant. Even if you're not athletic, you play video games. Like I play MOBAs and competitive multiplayer video games. I enjoy the competition. I enjoy being able to win and you know show off my skill. This is part of the dominance instinct. Men want to be great at something. They want to show that they're better than other men at something. And when men are simply inferior to other men, like they realize they suck at everything. They can't beat men. They have nothing to be proud of they sink into really deep depression. Facts. This drive to dominate is so intrinsic to male nature that if a man can't have anything 
that he can be proud of. And you see this sometimes. You see these guys that have really, they have nothing going on in life. But they have this one thing that they can be proud of. And they just cling to it. Whatever that thing is. It, this is a very common aspect of male nature. Men need something they can be proud of. That they can look at and be like, I'm better than the, you know these guys because X or Y or Z. Or X, Y, and Z. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what X, Y, and Z are. The point is, is it allows men to feel that they're better or superior or have better athletic ability or better whatever ability. Something that they can be proud of. But they can only measure that in regards to how they compete against other men. So if all men have X, this is simply a thing that all men have, all men do equally well, then there's nothing to be proud of. Even if that thing is really good, like, you know, let's say being a, being a good father. You know, let's say most men are good fathers. Well, men aren't proud of being a good father. Mm. They don't really take any joy in it because it's expected of them because it's normal. They have to do something great that most men can't do. Be Just real, um, he, he also said something. Um, he said that um, men that are um, not good at anything or are weak in most things, they can sink, sink in a deep down depression. And I think that's true. And what it, what it made me think of is... Um, you know, those that do not have a why in life, that don't have a meaning in life. They haven't discovered their meaning, which is why I say on this channel all the time, one of the most important things that you can ever do as a man is truly find yourself, right? And even if you don't find yourself exactly, right, you are at least closer today than you were yesterday. And then once you find that, it's how do you cultivate that into being the very best that you can possibly be? Because then that allows them to assert their dominance. They can be like, I'm better than all these guys because I can do this. And these other guys can't. I'm special because I did this or whatever. You see where I'm going with this. This is the dominance instinct. And we have to be aware of it. And we have to understand how it damages us. It prevents men from coming together for anything more than a common goal. You can get a group of men together for some sort of project or maybe even a business. It's very difficult to get men to come together for anything long term or just general brotherhood. There has to be something in it for everyone. And the entire time, there's all kinds of infighting. And you see this throughout the manosphere. Like, how many groups of feminists do you think there are? I mean, yeah, there's like the sex positive and sex negative and there's the intersectional. There's only a small handful of sub feminist groups. Most feminists are very passive and they're very unified. This is women's strength. Now think about the manosphere. Think about all the different acronyms that exist in the manosphere. You got the MRAs, you got the MGTOW, you got the TFLers, you got the PUAs, you got the IBMOR, you got all these acronyms in the manosphere. Why? Because everybody wants to have their little sandbox. Everybody wants to be in charge of their own little group. Everybody wants to assert their dominance. Not, not everybody. Um, some people want to form their own, their own ish, their own shit. Um, and I think that this is, um, you know, I see this uh, especially when, you know, within this shit, like the amount of people that will cling to the idea of being red pill or will cling to the idea of being the M word, M-G-T-O-W. Can't say that because it gets you demonetized, but will cling to that idea. But it was clear, but they're clinging to something or a framework and embodying it um, as if it is godly knowledge and information because they're attaching themselves to something that some other leader created. But when it comes from the creation of knowledge and the competition within that, I actually think that's a very good thing. Because I think uh, when you take competition out of an industry is when that product becomes lackluster. That's true within businesses and it's true within the creation of information as well. I think that if there was other versions of feminists or feminism, you, you might come up to a version of it that isn't as incendiary and toxic as the one, or at least the one that is most recently created, <laughs> um, third wave plus, um, today, okay? Um, but let's get back in it. This is a good video. He's, he's good. Good. This is the dominance instinct. This is why we can't have nice things as men. As soon as we form a working coalition, like let's just imagine men were the majority of the voters instead of women. Let's say men were 55% of the population as opposed to 49%, and men controlled the politics. What would happen is men would just splinter off and form different groups. 
And just like what happened in the early 1900s, the group whose agenda aligned with women would simply join with women. So likewise, whatever political coalition that's pro-man would develop in this situation would quickly splinter. And one of them would go with the women or they try to form something. It's all about the dominance. Mm. And I don't know if there's a solution for that. I mean, in my own life, I like to play competitive video games. It helps me get, you know, I guess the dominance out in a productive, non-harmful way. Now, maybe sports is your thing. Maybe bodybuilding is your thing. You have to have something that you can be proud of. Great YouTube you know, videos. puts you above men in some area. Maybe you're really good at science or whatever, whatever. Whatever makes you you, whatever you're proud of, you have to have your thing. Everyone's got their thing. You got to have your thing. Now, in the long term, in the grand scheme of things, in the overarching big picture, I don't know if there is a solution for dominance. I don't think men will ever be able to have that in-group bias the way women do. I just don't know. Just like I don't think it's possible for women to ever not be hypergamous. I don't think it's possible for men to ever not be dominant. Mm. It's simply in our nature. Mm -hmm. Now, we can be aware and we could try to redirect these, but ultimately, it's simply part of our nature. Listen, I think the video is done. Um, let me let me conclude. Yeah, I, I don't think that there is a way to take that dominance out of our nature, but I wouldn't want to. I think within that dominance, you get uh, cr creations and innovations and technologies that our uh, history has never seen before. And, and it's growing at an exponential rate because of that, that pursuit, right? Uh, because of that competitiveness. Uh, so, I, you know, I think that it's here and it's here to stay from an evolutionary perspective. I think <laughs> once you take that dominance out, the entire society falls apart, in my opinion. I appreciate his thoughts about that you have to find something. Listen to all you dudes that, you know, don't have anything to call your home or to be competitive about. I mean, here's the thing. I think it is more healthy for dudes to be involved with creation um, if they are doing it in a way that affords them some type of benefit okay early in my life as well I played a lot of video games and sometimes I think about where I would be in life if I dedicated some of that time to other things you see what I'm saying um, but now that I'm on this path towards more creating things and creating value as opposed to consuming value I really number one my, my video game stuff has pretty much gone out the window but I get just as much, if not more joy out of this as I did with that. So I challenge you to find these different things in your life as well. Trust me, okay? All right, that's been my video. That's been my reaction. Shao Kahn, show the charge. <laughs> you always send in <laughs> the dope ones, man. I wholeheartedly appreciate that. Turd flinging money. <laughs> Turd flinging monkey is the content creator. Fantastic content. You know, I, f I feel like I was in a, uh, I feel like I was in a classroom. Okay, fantastic content, my G. All right, questions, comments, concerns. Y'all already know what to do. Mediocre tutorials and reviews at gmail.com. I also got a Patreon as well. Y'all already know that because that's how I got this video reaction. If you're interested in giving me video reactions, if you're interested in being a part of my inner circle, we got a private Discord community where we all get up there and we talk about everything from male to female nature to motivation in the gym, your fitness, how are you training, how are you eating, what's your diet, all of these different things. We got a gaming channel as well, all of these different things to fortify yourself as a human being, okay? Links all down in the description box down below. We building an army out here, okay? We building an army out here. Until next time, YouTube. Peace.